Do you want to install contact paper countertops? Today, I'm going to show you how. Hey everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. I have installed contact paper countertops just like this faux marble one in three different little kitchens. So throughout that process, I have learned a lot. I've had them for three years in one of the kitchens and I always get so many questions about installing contact paper on counters. Today, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it step by step using this island top as an example. Plus, I'm gonna share with you one trick that I learned from one of you that totally changed my life for installing these, and I'm gonna share my review on them. So let's get started. What is contact paper? Contact paper is basically a vinyl-like peel and stick sort of product that you can peel the backing off and put it onto almost any surface. So can contact paper, just like this, be used on countertops? My answer is yes. I think there are many good applications for this stuff. Does contact paper come off easily? My answer is usually yes. It's going to depend on which type of contact paper that you use, and it's also going to depend on your surface that you're putting it on. I have a specific type that I use. I've used it on laminate and wood countertops, and in both instances, I'm able to peel it off no problem. In my opinion, the best contact paper out there is this DC Fix stuff right here. I've used it in three different kitchens and I would 100% recommend it. You can find it off Amazon. I'll make sure to leave my link to it down in that description box below. I love this marble look from DC Fix. So this is a vinyl substance. It's thicker than the other contact papers that I've tried. I did use one in the back of my closet recently and this one is definitely thicker. The other one was almost transparent. The DC Fix is certainly not. This one's also water resistant. It installs beautifully and it's really easy to clean. I've put this exact contact paper in our first camper that we did three years ago and it still looks great in there. We definitely used it a lot and we were able to wipe it clean, no problem. I also used it in our DIY camper 2.0 that we started last year and so far that looks really great too. And then finally, I used it here in my studio on this butcher block countertop. All right, so ready to get installing contact paper? Let me show you exactly how step by step. Step number one is to make sure that the surface you're installing the contact paper on is really clean. So for a laminate surface, you're going to want to wipe the entire thing with a decreasing cleaner. Something as simple as a Windex is gonna work for you. And if you're working with a wooden countertop surface like I am here, you might even want to give your surface a quick sanding. In my case, I use this countertop in my studio for doing all sorts of crafts with glue guns. So there's all this glue on here and everything I wanted to sand right off. Next, measure your counter and then measure your contact paper and cut it. What I love about the DC Fix brand is that it has the grid marks on the back. You're able to cut it with just simple, sharp scissors. Use that grid line to make a nice straight cut. Make sure you leave extra product to wrap around the front of your counter as well as underneath. In my case, I didn't need to go all the way underneath my island because I'm never really seeing that in the application I'm using it. So I basically just added an inch to wrap around underneath, make sure I covered the sides of the island, and then of course the whole top. Now you can gently remove just the first couple inches of the backing of your contact paper and apply that to your surface. I find that this is a lot easier than trying to take the entire backing off. You're gonna get a more even installation this way. Now you can begin by smoothing the contact paper onto your surface. You can use a plastic spatula for this, a soft cloth, or your hand. Honestly, I prefer to kind of use the heel of my hand because I find it so soft and I just can work better that way and I don't get any sort of really harsh lines or wrinkling using just my hand. And then you're just gonna continue on with this until all of your contact paper is applied to your surface. You can just keep measuring and cutting and applying just like we talked about in the previous steps.
about the traveling kind It's a known fact Yeah, I know that Now here is the part that I absolutely love the most and I actually learned from a few of you. You commented this on our Camper 2.0 video. Many of you told me to use a blow dryer to shrink the contact paper so it's going to wrap around any curved surfaces. It also helps take out air bubbles. So this is the final step I would recommend that I just learned this year. So thank you so much for sharing that with me. I really appreciate when you guys give me constructive criticism and ideas in the comments because I think that helps all of us. So make sure to use your lowest heat setting on your hair dryer and go ahead and just hover that over top of your contact paper surface. Then you can use your hand or something really soft again to gently push out any air bubbles or to wrap around any curves in your counter surface. Please be careful that you're not burning yourself. Use your low heat setting. Know your hair dryer. Just make sure that you're safe with this as well. Now I'm not doing it in this particular installation. However, I did do it in my campers. If you're cutting around the sink, that can be a little bit tricky, but here are some tips. You can create a template out of scrap paper or brown craft paper first. Use that to trace around your sink and then use that as a pattern to cut your contact paper. Just leave an extra half an inch to an inch of ease and then you can trim that away no problem with a craft knife afterwards. What about the corners and the seams on this stuff? So for the corners, what I like to do is just cut a notch 90 degrees out of the corner edge, leaving just a little bit of extra contact paper for ease, smoothing that down and then using the blow dryer to kind of shrink that and wrap that perfectly around the corners. And I feel that method gives me a pretty nice edge on my corners. As far as the seams go in the contact paper, you will probably have seams in your installation because there's only certain sizes of contact paper you can buy. Just make sure to butt the contact paper up together rather than overlapping it and that's gonna give you a more even finish. It's also gonna wear better because it's not gonna have any lifting where the things are overlapping. You can buy quite wide or narrow versions of this particular one, the DC Fix. For this island, I just used two wide pieces. Again, check out the links in the description box below if you wanna purchase this exact one. Now, I didn't have to use it in this application because there is obviously no sink here, but another thing you can do to make contact paper countertops look professional and stay all sealed up is put a little bead of caulking along where the counter meets your wall. And you can also put a little bead of caulking around the sink. I just use latex caulking, but you could use silicone as well around the sink. And that's gonna give it a finished look and keep it from peeling up in those spots. Now what about cleaning contact paper countertops? You can just use regular soap and water to clean them, no problem. They're quite water resistant and I haven't found any issues with staining or ripping yet. If I do, I'll make sure to update you guys down in those comments below. Another question I get asked a lot is, is contact paper heat resistant? Again, this is really gonna depend on which brand you use, but for this DC Fix, it's heat resistant up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. So here is how this island top in my studio looked like before, and here it is after. I'd been using a little makeshift faux marble piece to put down for my videos, but I really wanted to cover this whole thing with a marble look because I really like that as a backdrop for DIYs. I thought this was the perfect solution and if I ever get tired of it, I can easily just remove it and do something else. So my contact paper countertop review, I think they're a fantastic solution to get a nice marble look on a budget. They're easy to install, I find them easy to clean and I think they look pretty good for what you pay for. Would I put this in my own kitchen permanently? Probably not. I do think nothing beats the look of a real solid countertop like quartz or real marble, which incidentally, I wouldn't put real marble in my kitchen because I would just make it so messy and stained. But I do think there is a pattern repeat on this. You can see it. It doesn't look as real as a real solid surface would look. 
but I do think it is a fantastic solution for a small space like a camper. I think it's a fantastic solution if you are renting and you really dislike your current countertops and you wanna put, want put something down that isn't permanent. And I also think it's a solution for something like, say you hate your current counters, you really want to save up for you know quartz or granite or whatever, but you can't afford it. This could be a fantastic interim solution while you're waiting for that. So that is how I install contact paper countertops. That's what I think of them. And now I want to know about you. What do you think of this countertop installation? And would you ever install contact paper countertops in your home? Let me know down in those comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I really hope you found it helpful and you got some tips and ideas. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. I'm gonna leave some more videos that I hope you will love and enjoy watching next right up here.